My mic was muted. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the sixth stop of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. My name is Colleen. I am a teacher working for Agriculture in the Classroom Canada, and I am so excited to be bringing you along on these virtual farm tours. This week, we're in the prairies, with our first stop being in Manitoba. Here, we will see a seed farm and learn all about seed farming. Canadian Agriculture Literacy Month, also known as COM, is an event that Agriculture in the Classroom Canada and its provincial members host throughout the month of March. This year is the 11th anniversary of COM, and we are so excited to be celebrating this by hosting 11 virtual farm tours all across Canada. I have a few reminders for everyone before we get started. I've already seen some comments in the chat telling us where you're joining from, so please feel free to do this. Don't forget that you can write any questions you have throughout the tour in the chat function. We will be asking a couple questions throughout the tour, and then we will ask a lot during our question and answer period at the end. Also, all of our farm tours are, have three video learning breaks. The first two are called brain breaks, where we will learn some fun facts about seed farming. And in our last break, our job spotlight, we are going to be learning about an exciting career in agriculture. Okay, let's see where some of you are joining us from. A homeschooling family from Alberta. Another homeschooling family from New Brunswick. A grade two classroom from Northern Saskatchewan are on their fifth tour today. A homeschooling family from Halifax. And a grade three, four from Newfoundland. Wow, we really are joining from all across Canada. So thank you everyone for being here today. Agriculture in the Classroom Canada is so excited to be hosting this tour in partnership with Agriculture in the Classroom Manitoba. I would now like to introduce you to my co-host for today's tour, Jolene, Agriculture in the Classroom Manitoba's communication manager. Welcome, Jolene. Hi, thanks, Colleen. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to Manitoba, everyone. Agriculture in the Classroom Manitoba works with schools located on all the treaty lands in Manitoba, the original territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, Lakota, Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. AITCM acknowledges our role in the many relationships that make up our home and commit to a spirit of reconciliation. Thank you, Jolene. So there are many types of farms in Manitoba, and today we're gonna to be visiting a farm that produces seeds. So these types of farms are important because farmers need to know that the seeds they are planting will grow well on their farm, that the seeds are healthy and they will germinate well, and that there are not any weeds in with the seeds. So most farmers grow crops to be made into food for people or feed for animals, but some farmers grow crops to produce seeds for other farmers to plant. I'm excited to introduce you today to our farmer, Walt, from Smith Family Seeds. Hi, guys. Hi, hi Walt. Walt and his wife, Terry, and their five children, Hayden, Dylan, Madison, Tanner, and Kyler, farm in southern Manitoba in Pilot Mound. Walt has been a seed farmer for 15 years, growing crops to be used as seeds for other farmers and cleaning other farmers' seeds for them. Thanks for joining us today, Walt. Thanks, Jolene, Colleen. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys our farm today. Yeah, we cannot wait to learn more and see more. Um, but before we begin, as always, I want to remind our participants of some exciting components of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. So we hope that you've been enjoying your Great Canadian Farm Tour activity book. Don't forget that each tour has a corresponding page in the book with lots of fun activities for students to complete. Throughout the tour, there will be two uh, brain breaks, and this is where you will find the answers to the brain break questions in the activity book. And then we'll also have our job spotlight at the end. Uh, the last page in the activity book is the Great Canadian Farm Tour Passport. So don't forget to bring your passport along on the tours and record the mystery word that will be um, appearing in the top left corner of the screen at some point during the tour. 
Lastly, uh, we've received so many amazing entries to the Great Canadian Farm Tour contest. So teachers, don't forget to enter. All you have to do is take a photo of your class participating in the Great Canadian Farm Tour and post it to social media using the hashtag GCFT22Contest. Okay, time to start the tour. Walt, hey. we, yeah, we see you moved outside. Can you tell us about the activities that happen in this area of your farm? Yeah, hey guys, welcome to the outside of our seed farm here. We've been farming here for over 140 years and I'm just gonna give you a, a little bit of a tour of what we see around us here. So over here on my left, that's a scale. And we use that, it's about 93 feet long, 12 feet wide, and that weighs all kinds of trucks that bring the grains and seeds into our seed plant here. Trucks like the one behind me here, or maybe it's just a small one, like the red one here. And uh, as we move across the yard here, you can see all these white things in the background. And that's what us farmers call grain bins or seed bins. And they store grain and seed. And so in those bins, we can have barley, we can have oats, we can have peas and flax, or maybe some soybeans and edible beans. And those seeds are used for, well, almost anything from protein for animals, or maybe we're using it for, uh, for protein for humans in the case of peas, uh, or maybe it's getting used as for flour for wheat or uh, something like that. And so, uh, yeah, those bins, they can each hold, like we got about 50 or 60 of those bins in the yard here, and they can hold maybe anywhere from a one or two semi loads up to seven or eight semi loads of seed per bin. And wow. you're gonna notice they're, they're painted, they're white, they got a nice little cone bottom, and that's so they're easy to clean out because on a seed farm, one of the biggest things we worry about is seed purity. We don't want anything that can maybe sneak into the seed if it was stuck on the inside of the bins. So how do we get the grain in and out of those bins, you wonder? This is an auger, if you see here, we're gonna look inside an auger and you can see it's just got, uh, we call that flighting. And that just turns and as it turns, it pushes grain all the way up to the top and then all the way into the bin in the background. And you guys are like, wow, that looks pretty big. And this is like a 16 inch auger. And so I've got a son, Dylan, he's in grade three. He weighs about, oh, I'd say 60 pounds or so. And this moves about 400 Dylans a minute. So if Dylan was a bushel of grain, we would move about 400 of him every minute or around 24,000 an hour. Uh, for example, the, the semi truck we looked at earlier, it holds about 1200 Dillons. And so, <laughs> yeah, it would take about three minutes to dump that long white semi truck in the background there. Wow. That's a lot of Dillons. <laughs> it's a lot of Dillons. We like Dylan. I don't know if we could handle 1200 of them. So, <laughs> so yeah, a big part of it always is, is we do have to be able to clean out the augers. So we will uh, reverse the flighting and run it backwards. And then we'll use air guns and all sorts of tools to kind of just clean out the, the auger to make sure there's absolutely nothing in there when we go to move the clean seed. And uh, you can see on the grates here, safety is a concern too. As you can see, I'm gonna step on here. There's no chance of me going in the auger. We got good safety features to protect you because uh, in the old days, they used to not have these things and you would stick a hand or a foot and slip in there and it would catch. Oh no. Uh, yeah, and that well, I'm glad not, they've changed that now. Uh, yeah, we've come a long mm -hmm. ways in the last 140 years. And uh, yeah, you can see this is the incoming seed plant uh, or the incoming bin on the seed plant. And so you can, this auger, it handles the dirty grain before it's cleaned. Uh, and yeah, it just goes into that bin. And again, more safety, you can see on our bin, we have a nice cage and handrails on the ladder there just to make sure that if someone's going up to fix something that uh, they're well protected. Nice. Can you explain what you mean by dirty grain, Walt? Dirty grain is simply grain. It would be good if you were gonna maybe use it for animal feed or you were gonna use it for, you know, making a loaf of bread, but it's not clean enough for seed. For seed, we wanna make sure that it is spotless. So it, it might have some things like 
you know, a little bit of chaff. Maybe uh, this is wheat we're cleaning right now, so it might have the odd oat in it or maybe a soybean. And we're trying to clean all of that out so when the farmers go and seed the grain in their field, it's 100% pure. Perfect. So the dirty grain is what comes right off the field, like the combines take that off and put it in the trucks and bring it to you? You bet. All the farmers, they go and they put it in their trucks and they put it in their bins. And then I call them in the middle of January when it's really cold. And I say, bring your grain on down. We're going to clean this up for you and make it into seed. Perfect. Okay. So I just want to remind students that you can ask any questions you have in the chat. And right now we're going to watch our first brain break. Brain break. Did you know? All seeds need water, oxygen, and proper temperature in order to germinate and start growing into a plant. Thanks for learning with us. Okay, Walt, it looks like you're inside oh. now. Yeah, where you, welcome. Where have you moved welcome, to? Welcome to my grain grading shack. So this is another important area of our seed farm here. And uh, as you can see, we got many buckets of all kinds of grain. And uh, come on over here and I'll show you guys these are some of the different stuff we have and some of it is clean like you can see this these oats are clean but some of it's dirty like those soybeans there but basically uh, this is the area where we go through all the seed we clean and we pick through it very slowly kernel by kernel and make sure there's no impurities so yeah we've got lots of different stuff in there and so i'll just show you a quick quick example here of uh of what we're doing in the seed plant so in the seed plant, we got lots of machines and they got screens like this. And what we do is we take the seed and we put it over there and then the seed plant, it just goes like this and it shakes that seed and anything that's too small will go through and become your screenings. And that's the stuff that's too small or not the right kind of seed will all go through there. And you guys, one thing we use a lot of on our seed farm bouncy balls. You guys thought these were just for playing with, right? Well, what happens is, is when you're cleaning, look at that, all these seeds are stuck in there. And so what we do is we have bouncy balls in our seed cleaning machines and they just bounce around and they just pop out those little seeds so that our seed screens stay clean and never get plugged with screens. Oh, cool. So you How would clever. think, you would think that, you know, man, how many bouncy balls would an adult man have in southern manitoba if he's a seed grower and i'll tell you i got two or three thousand bouncy balls and i bought them all and i play with them every day in my seed plant wow <laughs> so, well what's the what's the craziest thing you've ever found when you're cleaning seed what kinds of things do you find in there you know i think once uh once we found a paint can like a spray paint oh. can someone had uh, left a spray paint can in their truck when they were filling it with grain and they brought it and they dumped it in and it went through our bin and then it was in the grain and we we caught it in our seed cleaners and wow. uh, that's probably the craziest thing i've ever found so far wow crazy. Um, yeah a big part of a uh, seed is traceability so you can see here this is a an example of a bag we send seed samples away for and so you can see we got all kinds of tests we run we do a germination test which is what kind of, uh, what percent of your seed grows. We have moisture percentage. That tells you what moisture of the seed is. A thousand kernel weight. We're looking at uh, when you're seeding, you wanna know what your thousand kernel is weight is because you wanna seed a certain amount of seeds per acre. And so everyone's trying to use their germination percentage and their thousand kernel weight to come up with the exact seeding rate they wanna use. Some other stuff they do on there also is disease testing or DNA testing. They actually uh, can go and they can figure out exactly what variety of wheat or barley it is based on a DNA test. 
which is pretty crazy when you think that they're doing a D DNA test on a little seed that size. Wow. What kind of seed is that? That is a wheat seed. So if you look on my little blue sheet here, we've got a few different seeds. And here's a sample of what uh, what some unclean soybeans would look like. So you can see you got some pods that came from the combine. You see these, these are some grasshopper tails. So some poor grasshopper tried to eat the soybeans and ended up in the combine. Uh -huh. You got a rock in there. <laughs> And all those things farmers really don't want in their seed when they're going to seed. And then here's a unclean barley sample and it's much the same. You got some barley, you got, got some bugs that maybe got, uh, got into the grain. You see you got long tails on their barley like that. Well, that doesn't really flow well when you're going to seed. It could plug your seeder and not go into the, not go into the ground. And then over here, we've got some clean samples. You can see this is a clean sample of barley. And the only thing you're going to see in there is barley. There's no no really small kernels or anything like that. They're very uniform in size. For sure, no no oats or anything like is in the other sample. And just a very clean sample. And then here's some wheat as well. And you can see too that it's just a very uniform, clean sample with no uh, chaff or straw or anything like that that you wouldn't want in your sample. Can you show us a piece of chaff, Walt, and explain what that is? Do you have yeah. any there in your samples? You know what? When we get into the seed plant, I think we plan on showing some chaff when we get in there. Okay, um, sounds good. But what I can show you is here's our samples. So we sell certified seed, which means the government regulates it. And they have rules that you have to keep a sample of everything you sell for one to two years after your last point of sale. So as you can see here, each one of these pails represents a lot of seed. And a lot of seed just means it's the same variety and kind off the same field. And uh, each one of these represents that. And some of them are really small. Like uh, this one right here, this was probably only a, a maybe a 2000 bushel or 2000 Dillon lot. Uh, mm -hmm. But we have some other lots in here, which I'm looking for something like this one here this was a 50,000 dillon lot where it's 50,000 bushels and so it's very different lot sizes but each of these rep pails represents a different lot of seed we've cleaned over the years neat i think we can take a question from the chat if you're ready for that how many seeds do you have on your farm i'm guessing that means how many different kinds of seeds that's from uh, natasha kane's class you know, on our farm, we grow about eight different kinds of seeds. Uh, we would grow flax, uh, canola, soybeans, peas, uh, uh, barley, oats, wheat, and uh, sometimes we grow uh, perennial ryegrass as well. Wow. Sounds busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of cleaning out of equipment and combines and trucks to maintain purity between seed kinds. I bet. Um, we're going to take our second brain break now. So listen closely to record the correct answer in your activity book. Brain break. Did you know? The crops grown in Manitoba are used in many ways. These uses include forage, fiber, food, and feed. Forage means plants animals graze on. For example, grass. Fiber means plants used to make paper, cloth, or rope. For example, hemp. Food means plants humans eat. For example, oats. Feed means plants that animals are fed. For example, corn. Thanks for learning with us. So all the crops grown in Manitoba are not just for humans to eat. Some crops are grown for animals to eat and others are grown to produce seeds so that other farmers have plants that they can seed for their next year's crop. What's that? It's today's mystery word. So today we're in Manitoba. You can write down the mystery word great beside this province in your passport and also 
This is another word to add to your mystery sentence on the bottom of your passport. Okay, Walt, it looks like you've moved again. Where are you now? Can you yeah. tell us a bit about it? Yeah, you bet. Right now we are in the seed plant mechanical room. And so if you look around here, behind me is actually, this is a touchscreen computer. And what it does is it monitors all the equipment in my seed plant along with all my bins. And it tells me, you can see here, we've got a full bin. Uh, you select which bin we're cleaning into, which bin we're cleaning out of and which bin holds the rejects of what we don't want and so yeah this is basically the brains of the operation 10 years ago it was a different story you had to go around and turn on all the motors manually one by one in a certain order they wouldn't fire up properly and you'd have a mess now i come here and i press one button and the whole seed plant starts up and uh it'll send me a text if something goes wrong or a bin gets full or something and with most wow. seed plants, we do have a lot of tools here. If you look around and you can see we've got uh, things break every now and then. And so we got a good assortment of tools in here that hopefully help us to keep things rolling. And uh, yeah, and we have, we roll 24 hours a day when we're running, uh, unless the bin runs out of seed. This seed plant, we right here have a thousand amp service, uh, 600 volt, which is a pretty big service. Like most houses in Manitoba would have, would only have uh, say uh, maybe 200 amp uh, service of single phase. But this is enough that you could have six or seven Tesla superchargers at our seed plant site and you could be charging cars when you're here. That's how much power we have going into our yard site here. But enough about in the office, let's go take a look at the equipment. Oh, cool. So what's that that we're looking at? So this is the different equipment that we clean with at the seed plant. So this is our screen machine. So it has all the bouncy balls and what we're looking at, that's what keeps the screens clean. And in there, we have a bunch of different screens and different screens are for different things. So you can see this one's a slotted screen. So this would be used for scalping oats and getting rid of any soybeans or anything like that that are a little bit too wide. And then we've got triangle screens that maybe you've got some wheat or something that's got some really small weed seeds that are round in it. Those triangle screens holes will get rid of that. And then here we've got some uh, round scalp. So right now we're actually using these round scalp screens in our seed plant. And you can see here, if I stick my hand in here, you can see kind of what we're looking at there. So there, it's uh, we got some grasshoppers that are coming out. And this is the chaff I was talking about earlier. This, if anyone can see it, that's actually part of a thistle ball. So that's some weed seeds we definitely don't want in the grain. So basically, okay. what we clean with here is uh, there's three main kinds of sorting we do here. So the first machine, that sorts on width. So if your grain is the right width, it'll go through the slots. And if it's too wide or too narrow, it'll be sifted out and it'll be put in with the grain that goes out to be used as cattle feed or something else, but it won't be used for seeding a field. And then in the background, we got a couple of machines turning. You can see a little flashing there. and Those separate by length. So if you have any seeds that are damaged, like for example, uh, wheat seed that got cracked in half, what happens is, is that wheat kernel, it won't grow. You don't want that in with your seed. So it'll pull out all the half kernels and all the short seeds. And then if you're cleaning something like wheat that's a shorter, stubbier seed, uh, oats or anything that's longer won't be sorted. So it's too long to be sorted by that. And then the final separation is density. So this machine sorts by density. And so what that does is it actually turns your grain into a liquid. So what it does is in a liquid is the heavy stuff floats to the bottom and the light stuff goes to the top. And it does that by pushing air through. And the light stuff on top floats down and the heavy stuff on the bottom 
we have a little table under there that vibrates and pushes it to the top and comes off the far end. So then you can see over here. There's a sample of what the clean grain looks like. So you can see there's no impurities, no white caps or anything like that. And the other separation we have just for maybe peas or soybeans is we have something called, oh, they're uh, rotary cleaners. And what it happens is if your seed is round, it will go off the edge as clean seed. And if it's not round, then it goes down into the screenings. And here's a sample of some pea screenings. So if you look here, this is what would be coming off. And wow, look at all the grasshopper parts and shriveled seeds and cracked seeds. And this, this is still good for something. This were actually all went for cattle feed. And so it fed some cattle and made some nice hamburgers at McDonald's or something. <laughs> wow. It's so interesting. All the processes seeds have to go to go through before they're planted in the ground. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of work. Many different levels. Yeah, we have a question here from the chat. Um, William's asking, do you do this all year long? You know, we typically start in September off the combine, cleaning stuff like peas that can't be cleaned when it's cold. And it's March right now, and we're still going. Uh, I think we should be done by April 1st this year. But uh, sometimes there's some last-minute guys that say, you know what? I can't seed what I was going to seed. I need to seed something else. So we sometimes clean into April and May as well. But May, June, July, and August... That's when we spend our time growing our seed crops so we have something to sell and clean the next year. Okay. Okay. So we're going to head into the last section of our tour, the Q&A section. So don't forget, you can ask any questions you have in the chat. Right now, we're going to watch our job spotlight and learn about an exciting career in agriculture. Job Spotlight, powered by Think Ag. Drone operators help crop farmers see what is happening in their fields. What do drone operators do? I take photos and videos of fields by flying a drone over them. I use the drone to look at crop fields and find possible problem areas, like where plants are covered in water or where they are not growing because it's too dry. I provide my customer with the pictures, videos and maps that I've created. Okay, so I bet some of our viewers didn't know that you can be a drone operator as a full-time job. So drone operators really help farmers to understand their fields and help them see things that you wouldn't be able to see from the ground level. I think that would be a cool job. I know, I like that'd be fun too. <laughs> okay, well, you made it back to your office. We'll get started with this Q&A. You bet, I'm back in the office. Perfect. A little dirty, but that's okay. <laughs> it must be dusty out there. Okay, there's our lots of dust in the seed plant. Makes sense. Our first question here is: How many workers work at your farm? Uh, on our farm, we have. Uh, I actually farm with my brother-in-law, so he works uh, full time as well as myself. Uh, my wife does our books. And then I would have another four employees that would help us throughout the winter, moving grain around, cleaning out trucks, augers, doing seed deliveries. Perfect. Okay. Sounds like a busy place to work. Yeah. Uh, we've got another question here coming from Liz Hunter's class. What tools are used to clean the auger and how do you get the grain out of the auger? So when we reverse the auger, there's a little hole at the bottom, a little hatch, and we take that off. And uh, the PTO shaft, uh, it goes in, it switches slots in the gearbox, and there's actually a, a reverse slot. And then you turn it on, and it, and it turns it backwards. And uh, once it's turned backwards, all the grain is out of the tube. We just have to clean the little cracks and stuff. So for that, we use an air compressor which is basically compressed air at around 140 PSI through a little nozzle. 
And we use some screwdrivers uh, and picks just to pick the grains out of the little nooks and crannies that it can sometimes get stuck in. Okay, interesting. We use an auger to make holes in the ice. So it looks like it's a very similar kind of a thing, right? It is, yep, yeah, very similar. <laughs> Okay, here's a question. What is your favorite seed to grow? Oh, man. I would say probably my favorite seed to grow would be oats. And the reason I like oats so much is because usually there's a lot of bushels. And I just like how busy it is when you're harvesting. And uh, yeah, just that you can fill a lot of the grain bins in a day. So I, I'd have to say oats. It, it's also the dustiest and the itchiest, but I still I still <laughs> like to grow it. <laughs> Very interesting. What time of the year are oats harvested? Oats are typically harvested in August where we are. When you get into Saskatchewan and Northern Alberta, I'm thinking that might stretch into September. Perfect. Um, so Dan Cowell's class is asking, when you talked about moisture, are there different moisture levels that different seeds need? Or is it all the same? No, it's different. So different grains keep at different moistures. For example, something like a wheat seed uh, at 14.8% moisture, that's considered dry. Whereas you go with something like oats, it needs to be 13.5% moisture to be dry. And that has to do with the, their stability and storage and, and they'll spoil if they're stored at higher moistures. Uh, canola, for example, is 10%. Uh, you kind of want to be under 10% moisture to store canola safely because it's got a high oil content as well. And so, yeah, we, uh, as seed sellers, all our seed of course has to be the correct moisture so that it'll store because the last thing we want is to sell seed to customers and uh, have it spoil in their bin because a spoiled seed will not germinate. Okay, so that's actually kind of dry compared. I think my house is around 38, 38% right now. So that's a bit drier correct. than the house would be, right? Quite a bit drier, yep. Interesting. Okay, so one of Jocelyn's students wants to know what canola is. Oh, canola is a very small seed that they use to create uh, canola oil and canola meal. And so probably you don't see a lot of canola meal in your house. That's typically used for animal feed, but you might see canola oil. I know in our house, we actually make homemade French fries with canola oil in a deep fryer once or twice uh, a month. And uh, that's, that's what we use our canola for. Typically, if you're driving across the prairies in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, I think there's a little bit in Ontario and Quebec, you'll see a sea of yellow and that's the canola flowers uh, when it's blooming. And yet uh, the canola is actually a little dark brownish, reddish seed uh, when it's harvested, but it, it looks pretty nice for two or three weeks in the summer. Yeah, it's, flowers are beautiful and canola was actually invented in Canada. So maybe this is a plant that you and your class can look up even more. Okay, so we've got another question here from Levi and he asks, do you have to worry about any pests on your farm? Yes, we have lots of pests we deal with. So wireworm would be one that is a, is a worm that's in the soil and it'll eat your wheat seeds as they're growing. Um, another one oh, would be, uh, oh, probably flea beetles would be a big one around here. Uh, we often, uh, have our canola seeds that will get completely eaten by these little tiny flea beetles, but uh, a bunch of them can really wreak havoc on a, on a crop of canola. Um, but yeah, mainly bugs, no real animal problems. Uh, the odd time we can actually have geese that will go and eat uh, you know, up to 40 or 50 acres of a field. Uh, wow. And to put it in perspective, that's about 40 or 50 football fields. Uh, and not only do they make a mess by eating it, uh, they also poop and no one wants poop in their grain. And so <laughs> we've had it before where we've had to clean grain that's had wildlife damage uh, and we're cleaning out basically all the, the feces that is in the grain. Oh, wow. I never thought of the poop part of it, but yeah, that would be a problem too. I don't, I don't, don't like when geese poop on my yard. Bread, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you have any like mice or anything in your plant? Uh, yes, we do have the odd mice on the seed plant side, but we have lots of live traps that we capture them with. That makes sense. Uh, next question here. Have you ever had any major breakdowns? 
Oh, in harvest time once, we had a back tire fall off the mm -hmm. combine. The bolts oh, just no. decided to break one day. That was a somewhat major breakdown. Oh, uh, no. In the seed plant, you know, we haven't had anything too major. Most things we can fix within 24 hours uh, and get going again. Perfect. And we saw all those tools that you have to help you with that. <laughs> yeah. Many years of experience are required to keep things rolling. For sure. Okay. So Maddox is wondering how many tractors you have. Oh, on our farm, we probably have uh, 11 or 12 tractors. I, I don't wow. know exactly how many. So we have many tractors and uh, a couple of them, all they do is they sit on augers all year. And then uh, the rest of them do things like load mini bulks or scrape snow or mow the ditches or seed, grain cart, all those other jobs that we do on the farm. Wow. Okay, a grade three, four class is asking, how do you know what each seed is? Experience. <laughs> you just get good at it after a while. You know, it's like anything else. You learn what it is and, and if you keep doing it again and again and again, through repetition, then you can uh, identify them all. So uh, yeah, it's no different than, uh, you know, being able to tell the difference between hockey and basketball. It's because you know now, whereas, uh, yeah, if you were never told, then how are you supposed to know? Awesome, yeah, practice makes perfect. Okay, here we've got another question here. It looks like a two-parter. Um, you showed us those samples in buckets from product you have sold before. What do you do with the samples after the one to two year requirement to hold? Uh, do you hold on to them or can you sell them after that? So what we typically do is uh, after the, the one to two year requirement, we will go and we will put them in with our commercial grain. So grain that's just going for flour or for animal feed or whatever. And uh, yes, we can sell them. Uh, we don't don't want to hold on to them forever, but yet we can't sell them as seed because no one wants to buy a single pail of seed. They would like to maybe buy a truckload of seed, but not a pail. And so, uh, yeah, we typically would just dump them, dump them in the elevator and uh, yeah, sell them into the commercial market. Okay. Interesting. Okay, we have time for two more questions. So here, Jennifer's class is asking, why do seeds have to go through so much? Oh, seeds are very durable. They go through a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, if they, you have to get them pure at the end of the day, because uh, we have weeds that are herbicide resistance, which means that the spray can't kill them uh, and they'll take over. And so if you went uh, and seeded uh, wheat and it had a bunch of different wheat seeds in there, uh, you could lose a lot of yield potential. And uh uh, for example, on a typical wheat crop on our farm, we would get around 70 to 80 bushels an acre. Uh, if we were putting in a really dirty seed with a lot of weed seeds, you know, we might only get half of that, which is uh, really going to reduce the amount of, of seed we can sell. Uh, and in the case of a commercial farmer, it's really going to reduce the amount of bread or animal feed that they produce off their farm. Yeah, so the end goal of these seeds is to be planted back in the ground. So we want to make sure we're only planting those seeds, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, this is the last question um, from Trista Mullins' class. Do you like your job? It's a good question. I really like my job. I, uh, I've been doing it for a long time. You know, I probably started driving combine a little young. I was 12, I think, when I got my combine, and that was my combine all fall. And someone would move it between fields for me. And then once it was on the field, uh, that was my combine. And, and yeah, so I've been doing this for over 20 years. And if I didn't love it, I probably wouldn't be doing it. And uh, the good thing about the seed business, what I enjoy a lot about it is I get to deal with a, a lot of farmers and uh, usually farmers are really good to work with and uh, yeah, just a great, great crowd to, uh, to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's awesome. So good to love what you do. For sure. So unfortunately our question and answer period is over. Sorry, we didn't get to everyone's questions. There were so many good ones coming through. Teachers, make sure you keep an eye out on your email. We're going to be 
releasing information sheets that answer more of the questions that weren't able to be talked about during the tour. And thank you, Walt, so much for showing us around your farm. It was really great to see everything that you've got going on at, at Smith Family Seeds and how you clean seed and, and store seed. It was really interesting. So thank you so much. Well, thanks for, thanks for having me. And I want to thank you, Jolene, for being my co-host today. Thanks for bringing us to Manitoba and showing us around this farm. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was really fun being here. Okay, and thank you everyone for joining us on our sixth stop on the Great Canadian Farm Tour. Our next tour is going to be tomorrow. We're visiting a sugar beet farm in Alberta. As a final reminder, don't forget teachers to enter our social media contest. All you have to do is upload a photo of your class using the hashtag GCFT22 contest for a chance to win a prize pack. Also, we hope you're using your activity book and passports and that you recorded the sixth clue of the mystery sentence in your passport. If you missed it, today's word was great. Don't forget these live tours are being recorded and they're gonna live on Agriculture in the Classroom Canada's YouTube page. So if you've missed any of our previous tours, you can always go back and watch them. Or if there's a live tour coming up and the time doesn't quite work for you, you can always watch it after the live stream. We'll see you tomorrow in Alberta. Bye.